the failure, failure of various rearmament plans to produce for shortages of skilled workers, industrial unrest caused by the breakdown of German social policies and a sharp drop in living standards for the German working class forced Hitler to go into war at a time and place not of his choosing. Well, that is partly right because um, Hitler did not want to go to war with Britain. In fact, he in um, in Munich he was going to meet Churchill at a hotel, but when Churchill turned up for the meeting, uh, it, this is before the war in the nineteen thirties. Um, Pussy Hafenstahl did meet Churchill, uh, who was and Pussy Pussy Hafenstahl was Hitler's adjutant. Um, Pussy Hafenstahl said to Hitler to Ch Churchill that Hitler might meet him, um, but the consideration was whether Britain would accept Italy as part of an alliance between Germany and Britain and France, and. Britain, Churchill said no on Italy because of Italy threatened the uh, Mediterranean trade routes and Britain's empire. So uh, Hitler had to choose between Italy and Britain and he chose wrong. He chose Italy over Britain uh, as a point of honour to Mussolini. Um, but... Uh, it continues... Um, Mason contended that when faced with a deep socio-economic socio crisis the Nazi leadership had decided to embark on a ruthless smash and grab foreign policy of seizing ter territory in Eastern Europe which could be pitilessly plundered to support living standards in Germany. Now this did happen in the Ukraine, which was detrimental to the German um, war effort because it prevented um, the uh, Ukrainians, the hard-pressed Ukrainians who had been crushed by the Soviet Union, from coming onto the side of the Germans, although many did volunteer to fight in the SS, those Ukrainians of, of German or Nordic descent. As Mason describes German foreign policy as driven by opportunistic next victim syndrome after the Anschluss, in which promiscuity of aggression intentions was nurtured by every successful foreign policy move. In Mason's opinion, the decision to sign the German Soviet non aggression pact with the Soviet Union and to attack Poland and the running the risk of war with Britain and France was the abandonment by Hitler of his foreign policy program outlined in Mein Kampf which was key those key points in Mein Kampf were to get an alliance with the Anglo-Saxon powers that was Great Britain and America and then to launch a war on the Soviet Union you know so Mason is correct there um outlined in Mein Kampf, forced him on him by his need to stop a collapsing German economy by seizing territory abroad to be plundered. Mason's leading critic was British economist, economic historian Richard Overy. Overy argued against Mark, the, uh, Mason's thesis, Marxist thesis, maintaining that though Germany was faced with economic problems in 1939, the extent of these problems could not be explained, could explain aggression against Poland and the reason for the outbreak of war were due to choices made by the National Socialist leadership. For Overy, the problem with Mason's thesis was that it rested on the assumption that in in a way not shown by records, information was passed on to Hitler about the Reich's economic problems. Overy argued that there was a difference between economic pressures induced by the problems of the four-year plan and economic motives to seize raw materials, industry and foreign reserves of neighbouring states as a way to accelerate the four-year plan. I reasserted that the re repressive capacity of the German state 
as a way of dealing with domestic unhappiness was somewhat downplayed by Mason. Finally, Overy argued that there was a considerable evidence that the German state felt that they could master the economic problems of rearmament. As one civil servant put it in January 1940, we already have mastered so many difficulties in the past that here too, if one or other raw material became extremely scarce, ways and means will be found to get around out of the fix. So therefore you have uh, the closeness of utilities of materials, you know. What is a good substitute for one material can be made synthetically, as the, the German chemistry industry was able to do. Another part of the new German economy was the massive rearmament with the goal being to expand the 100,000 German army into, the, into a force of millions. The four-year plan was discussed in the controversial Hosenbach Memorandum, which provides the minutes for one of Hitler's briefings. Nevertheless, the war came, and although the four-year plan was technically expired in 1940, Hermann Göring had built up a power base in the office of the four-year plan that effectively controlled all German economic uh, and production matters by this point. In 1942, the growing burdens of the war and the death of Tolt, and it, who was head of the Tolt um, organisation, saw the economy move to a full war economy under Albert Speer. Wartime policies. Initially, the outbreak of World War II did not bring any large changes in the German economy. Germany had spent six years preparing for war and a large portion of the economy was already devoted to military production. Unlike most, gov most other governments, the Nazis did not increase direct taxes by any significant amount in order to fund the war. The top income tax rate in 1934 was 13.7 per cent in Germany as opposed to 23 per cent in Great Britain. And of course Great Britain spent a quarter of its uh, wealth, uh, the whole empire, and mortgaged off its empire for 50 years to the Americans, uh, sorry, a 99 year lease of its, uh, of its colonies to the Americans by uh, Winston Churchill did that. During the war, as uh, Germany acquired new territories either by direct annexation or installing puppet governments in defeated countries, these new territories were forced to sell raw materials and agricultural products to German buyers at extremely low prices. Hitler's policy of Lebensraum strongly emphasised the conquest of new lands in the east and the exploration of these lands to put exploitation of these lands to provide cheap goods to Germany. In practice, however, the intensity of the fight on the Eastern Front and the Soviet scorcher policy meant that the Germans found little they could use. On the other hand, large quantities of goods flowed into Germany from conquered lands in the West. For example, two-thirds of all French trains in 1941 were used to carry goods to Germany. Norway lost 20% of its national income in 1940 and 40% in 1943. Fiscal policy was directed towards exploration, exploitation of conquered countries from which capital was to be gathered for German investments, banks such as Bank Eimschel Port Polsk were created to manage uh, local economies. So this is a, a, a cent this is a bank being imposed on foreign um, conquered territories. Even before the war, Nazi Germany maintained a supply of slave labor. This uh, practice started from the early days of labor camps for undesirables, um, such as the homeless, homosexuals, criminals, as well as political dissidents, communists, Jews, and anyone that the regime wanted out of the way. As the war progressed, the use of slave labour exper experienced mass massive growth. Prisoners of war and civilian undesirables were brought in from occupied countries. Um, hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of Jews, Slavs and other conquered peoples were used as slave labourers by German corporations such as Thysel, Crump, IG, Farben and even 
Ford work, a subsidiary of Ford, my company, 